Hi, everybody. My name's Ross. I make games. Today, I wanted to talk about failure. You see, two and a half years ago, I started developing games, and I did so out of a sincere passion for the medium. I had already started a YouTube channel about the game industry, written some freelance articles for some reputable outlets, and even had a short-lived gaming news series on a website. But I wanted to do more than just talk about games. I wanted to take a crack at making one for myself. So I set out to learn game development, and man, there was a lot to learn, but it really wasn't that bad. I didn't have a background in computer science or game design or whatever you're supposed to have, but I did have a considerable amount of free time. So with a few game jams under my belt and a tenuous grasp of Unity, I did what most indie game developers do. I fucked up. I followed my dream. This sounds really depressing. Hear me out, I promise it does get better. You see, I had this idea for a game called Canyon Eternal. It's about a small child visiting his father at work when the elevator he's in breaks and falls deep down the shaft and into a cavern within the earth. It's swallowed by a giant underground worm and spirited to the foothills of a great canyon. Here the player will explore and survive as mysterious creatures guide him deeper and deeper into a ruined kingdom where nothing can die. The game underwent many iterations. It was a card game, it was a 3D action RPG because I was playing a lot of Dark Souls at the time, it was basically Undertale at one point, and for most of its development, it was a top-down action-adventure game with light RPG mechanics. And I finished a lot of its mechanics too. There was a dialogue system, a cell phone where you could call characters you'd already met, there was combat, boss fights, fast travel, a base you could decorate. I made so much art and composed over 80 original tracks, and one day, I realized I hated it. I hated my game because it wasn't a good game, because I wasn't a good designer, because I started three months before. This isn't all bad news. I had a lot of fun working on this project for over a year, and I still plan to return to it someday. Whenever I'm ready, that is. But there was a time to dive into an open-world RPG, and that time was not after finishing a 20-part platformer tutorial series, which I didn't even do correctly. There's a lot of problems that arise when developing a large game with no game development experience. For one thing, you don't know how to design a game in the first place. I enjoyed games quite a bit, and I had cool ideas for characters, locations, and story beats, but I didn't know anything about level design or difficulty progression, I didn't know how to prevent feature creep or how to market my game or how to break down the development cycle in order to manage my time. The specific reason I didn't like my game was that the combat was just atrocious. In Canyon Eternal, the way combat worked was that there were fragments of paper with runes inscribed on them. These were ripped from an ancient tome, and you could wield them and they would magically turn into a weapon or a spell temporarily. A flash of light would appear and suddenly you wouldn't be holding a card fragment anymore, you would be wielding a great axe or casting a bolt of lightning. But this was originally designed for a card game. When I realized I didn't want to make a card game anymore, I also failed to redesign the combat, and suddenly, this made no sense in a real-time setting. The bird's eye view perspective that I chose also had a lot of problems, as you couldn't see any world element head-on, and that drained the game of any character. Combined with the general messiness of the project itself, these problems ate away at me until I was so stressed out about it I couldn't look at the game anymore. So, obviously this was really discouraging. I had poured so much time and love into this project only to realize that it wasn't worth finishing in this iteration at least. I felt like I had failed. And I did. I failed. Here's the thing about failure. When you screw up and make a mistake, even a big one that costs you a lot of time like I did, you get to make a choice after that. You can push through and ignore that feeling, bury it deep inside, which I did for a while, or you can stop, feel that, and listen to what your mistake has to teach you. And what my mistake taught me was that you don't need to make something great. In fact, you shouldn't. The desire to make something magnificent that will help people, or something that will bring you fortune or fame or whatever, is not useful. It's not a useful instinct. You shouldn't try to make something great. Instead, you should try to make something. If you make something many times, you will become great at it, and then you will make great things. A few weeks ago, I was streaming game development for a different project on Twitch, and I came across a prototype for a skateboarding game that I'd worked on previously. I'd abandoned it, though. It was really simple. It was basically a platformer with skateboard controls, and I added a giant horse body as a joke. 
because it made everything more difficult. And you know what? It's fun. Like, it's a rage game, sure, and sometimes it falls more into the Flappy Bird side of things than the getting over it side of things, but it's just goofy. I like watching the horse crash or get stuck on geometry or fall into the abyss. I like designing levels based around simple themes like a pyramid or a skyscraper or a sewer. And I eventually decided, I'm just gonna finish this. It's gonna have a lot of problems and that's gonna have to be fine. I'm going to cover it more in the future on this channel as well as the other games that I'm going to make. Because I will make other games. They don't have to be good now because they'll be good later. And one day one of them will be great.